This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. Welcome, well, a very special guest joins us this evening. She's a powerhouse, and I'll just go over some of her big accomplishments. Uh, she's an entrepreneur among the companies that she's created. One went on uh, to become a billion dollar company. She's been an advocate. She's worked for the government in her role with the FBI, no less. She's a mentor to uh, many of, uh, founders and, and startups in the startup ecosystem in America. At present, she's the co-founder and CEO of a talent acquisition firm, uh, Sensia. She knows about building companies and she certainly knows about the value of people. Joanna Raleigh, thanks so much uh, uh, for joining us. And that introduction really goes on and on and on. But, you know, uh, if you were to ask, if, if you were to define yourself, mm. how would you do it? How tough is it to do that? I am people obsessed. That is how I define myself. I love people. I found that all of my accomplishments are not mine. They are, they are given to me by all the people that I surround myself with. I, I have to say I've, I've become incredibly inspired by the people around the world that create things and, and try and change the world for better. And finding those people that believe the same things and, that I believe mm. and trying to focus on the same things I focus on has become a big focus of mine, so. Mm. You know, you, you, you work with a talent acquisition firm. So, you yeah. know, sort of getting the right talent to the right places, yeah. to the right people who are looking for them. We in India are sort of now at a stage where we're wondering what the future of jobs is going to be. Where yeah. are the jobs? What kind of training or skills should people get to be yeah. prepared for the jobs of the future? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic question and one that mm -hmm. I found that no matter what country I was in around the world, this mm -hmm. was a huge problem. And so about a decade ago, it led the passion I have now for mm -hmm fundamentally changing the way that companies hire people and doing that by helping them with some of the really challenging low value work they do of finding people. You know, today it's much harder to find a qualified person than it ever has, even though we have more information on everybody, we have more people that have, you know, are putting themselves out there for jobs. The challenge is humans that are still trying to evaluate those people, yeah. they're not very good at actually looking at data. And yeah. so they can't look at the seven different places you put your data, you know, each yeah. individual puts their data. And so um, we looked at it and said, how do we apply math and science yeah. through artificial intelligence? How do we apply math and science to this problem? And yeah. how do we, how are we able to use artificial intelligence to predictably match the right people for mm. the right jobs and do mm. that at scale to mm. really impact the biggest mm. companies in the world? Mm. And so, you know, I, what I found was that people are notoriously good at being generalists. They say uh, they I can see. do everything. Yeah. They're like, I'm, I, I just get things done. Yeah. I'm really good at, yeah. you know, doing this and I take mm. on more than I need to. But the mm. challenge with being a generalist is that a decision about every, every decision made about a person is made in a room that they're not in. Whether it's for investment, whether it's for a job, whether it's for a promotion, it's always made in a room that they're not in. Mm. So the person can't advocate for themselves. Mm. So if their own message of what they're good at mm. can't be spread on, mm. being a generalist is very difficult to pass on when mm. you're saying, I'm gonna advocate for, advocate for somebody to get a job. Mm. I wanna be an advocate for somebody to get an investment. Mm. Well, if I can't explain about that person, mm. other than they're really good at getting things done, mm. you know, they're, they're good at all these different things, mm. it's very difficult to defend that. So mm. I think what something very, a very simple move that everybody can make is mm. really define what they're good at. Mm. And I think that starts with defining the things you're not good at. Mm. You know, then you can I start see. looking at I it see. and saying, if I really become an expert at that, I it see. will fundamentally change. So start with being honest with yourself, perhaps, sort of you oh, know, yeah. assess yourself well. Uh, you know, it's, in, it's interesting that you mentioned artificial intelligence because the other thing that we are worried about here in India is how artificial intelligence is just going to sort of, you know, yeah. fall on our heads and our jobs are going to yeah, go right. and, you know, we'll have no idea what's hit us. Sure, sure. How do you sort of see that? How worried should people really be on that front? You know, I don't think very worried. Um, hmm. 
I had an interesting conversation with uh, some of the Google X folks, and uh, you know, the very first time a self-driving car drove across the country in the United States, from the East Coast to the West Coast, the very first time that happened where without a human being touching the steering wheel was over 20 years ago. And the exact same technology that was used then is still being used now. But what, it's, what has taken so long and what still is going to take so much longer is to teach artificial intelligence what humans do. Humans, mm. every time we see something, right now I'm looking at this, I'm, every part of this room, every part that's happening, every instant that's happening is stored somewhere in my brain. Mm. And it allows me to make a better decision in the future. Mm. Artificial intelligence all needs to be programmed to do that. Mm. So while I could program this to move over here mm. and continue to do that, mm. I can't necessarily program it to spill its water out, I see. get back up and go across mm. the table. That so has to be Humans a will thing. still have value. Humans will absolutely still have value. Mm. What artificial intelligence is going to replace is mm. the low value work. And I the see. value of doing that is, in my space, for example, talent mm. acquisition, mm. when artificial intelligence replaces low value work, like sourcing across all these different networks or reading resumes mm. or updating data manually, mm. when that all of a sudden, when you, when you eliminate human beings from doing work like that, what also is eliminated is error and bias. And bias is a huge thing that plagues our, our industry and it's something that I've been enormously passionate about solving, obviously mm -hmm. as a female in tech. Mm -hmm. I'm very passionate about going against the bias and inserting diversity. Mm -hmm. But what's beautiful is when you add artificial intelligence into a process of predictively matching people for jobs, mm -hmm. they're diverse people. <laughs> you know, when the most qualified person is put to a job, they're very diverse, they're very different, and they bring an incredible amount of, of surprise, I would say, into the process. And I think that low value, eliminating that low value work has such a tenfold benefit for the company, but it allows the humans to do what they're really good at, the face-to-face -face interaction. And I think humans are going to continue to perfect that and need to continue to perfect okay. that. Okay. Um, but artificial, you know, we always say that, there are a lot of people in our industry, it's, it's an industry that's been around for a long time. It's a huge industry. It's about a $250 billion industry in the United States recruiting alone, which is insane. Um, but the people that, you know, th that do it, they're like, you guys are just going to come in and replace our jobs. We're like, we're not the Terminator. We're the Iron Man yeah. suit. You know, <laughs> it's, we're going to give you weapons like yeah. at your disposal. Yeah. You're going to be the most powerful people in the yeah. company, as yeah. you should be. You, you know, yeah. people are very, very valuable. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's always a very interesting thing to shift. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that I don't think AI is going to come in and, and take humans out. I think it's going to replace low value work. OK. Interesting, especially how it will play out in a country like India, but you talked about uh, the biases that come to play. Now, you know, one of the biases that we keep talking about here when we talk about the entrepreneurial and the startup space mm -hmm. is against women. Mm. Where are the women? We've got a measly 9% of startup founders in India yeah. are, are, are women. Yeah. I mean, we're also a conservative society and women are just about coming out yeah. of their homes. But it is a challenge all over the world, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're going to start seeing a, a wonderful shift occur. Um, I spent a lot of time really seeking out powerful women. I think, I think powerful women that are intelligent, that are driven, that are experts in their fields, that are just, they, they just are go-getters. They're like weapons. They're like, I, like, I, I want to just collect them all. So I seek them out and I have found that there is this growing mm. population of women that support other women, mm. which is pretty amazing because I think as we continue to fuel that support, the better we can be. Mm. One of the focuses I think though to change that is helping the end channel. So for, you know, for Silicon Valley, that is, mm -hmm. how do we get more female entrepreneurs mm -hmm. sitting in front of check writing partners mm -hmm. in, in venture? Because mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley, in the United States, only 2% of venture capital money goes to, VC, goes to women led companies. And that has to change, that mm -hmm. has to start shifting. But the way to shift that, and where the challenge is for for venture is that they don't see enough women. And I think it's the same problem you have here in India is how do we get more women to actually join the reins of being an entrepreneur? And I think it comes with showcasing female entrepreneurs, just like you are right now. I mean, when people see other women can do it, they believe they can too. And I think it's, it's absolutely true. We've seen this in 
every industry and every place around the world, when others are inspired, they can they actually start changing. And I think that there's an opportunity right now for those that support women, mm -hmm. for those that support diverse groups mm -hmm. to really become a mouthpiece, mm -hmm. to, to really shout that from the rooftops. You know, the investors that support me and, and the, the people that support me, they're, they're so proud of that. And when I support diverse groups and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm a partner at Sarah Cap, which mm -hmm. backs, we back Indian startups, mm -hmm. we back US startups, so we're really sp specialized in AI, mm -hmm. cybersecurity and healthcare. Mm -hmm. And we love celebrating diversity mm -hmm. and love shouting that out at the rooftops mm -hmm. because it, it inspires others to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is gonna start creating a major change mm -hmm. and, and movement. Uh, really around the world, but I, I am excited. For the first time last year, more females graduated than males from college and also with from com with computer science degrees. So I, I think we're going to start seeing this this move, but it's mm -hmm. coming from really inspiring leaders. Uh, I have to say, and I was those role models are always yeah. sort of good to hold out. To oh, that yeah. end, would it have been would it have been useful to have a woman president? Mm, I think so. I think uh, I think in a lot of ways there are people that that. She still inspired mm. a, a tremendous amount of people around the country, mm. and that gave many people hope, regardless mm. of of mm. the outcome. Mm. Um, and I, I think Hillary had she, she she really has been an influential advocate to diversity across the board. But mm. it she went against the grain in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. um, and I think that was that was really inspiring for people because it was not easy, and she faced a very very difficult battle. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm I'm hopeful that that will not be the mm. that will not be the only one. Mm -hmm. <laughs>